The aim of this video is to draw a right view. We've got a section line AA. We draw the right view, then we go and draw a sectional left view, and we draw the true shape on AA, but they want a view with the true shape. Take note that in this case we have a circular base. How do we know that? This auxiliary view that we have here tells us as much. We have a circular base that will have to be divided into 12. At any time when you have a cone, because this is what this is, it's a cone. Cone has got a, a round shaped base. So at any time you have a cone or even a cylinder where you have round shaped bases, the bases get divided into 12 first of all. So step one, divide your base into 12. You can now see that I have divided my base or this auxiliary view. I have divided that into 12 and I'm going to label it from 1, well, or from 0 to 12, starting at 0, 1, 2, going right, right around and getting to 12. We now need to project these points onto the base. You can now see that I have projected all these points, 4 and 2, I've done that, 4 and 2, 1 and 5, 5 there, 1 there, straight onto the base. So what I've done was I've divided my base and I've labeled it here. Take note that all these points goes to that top point T. All these points is joined with top point T because we're going to make use of these radial lines that I've drawn here. I'm not going to make use of these lines. So it's to be taken note of that these lines must actually fall away. So what I'm going to do is to join these points with point T. I only use these lines to determine its position on the base here. Now, this is what I want. I've got my radial lines all joined with top point T, and I've done the same on the base. I've joined them top point T because now I can determine the sectioning points. From T to point 9 has been intersected there. From T to point 8 and 10 is intersected there. From T to line or base point 7 and 11 intersected at that point. From point T to base point 6 and 12 is intersected there. The same here. This line intersects T1 and T5. That point intersects line T2 and T4. And that line intersects T3 at that point. And those are the points I'm going to use to draw a sectional left view. What I have done here was to measure 1. You see I have taken out those projection lines. I've measured that distance from the XY line. I've skipped 1 and I've measured 1. I've taken the distance from point 2 to my XY line, skip 2, measured 2. Taken the distance from point 3 to my XY line, skip 3, measured 3. I've done that a couple of times in previous drawings. I think you know what to do. And I've labeled once again. The only one that I haven't labeled yet is point T, which is right on top. You can see that I've now drawn the base through each one of those points. And I've joined each one of these points up to my top point. Something I want you to take note of is that I've drawn a line which is a tangent to the circle to the top point, which is not joined with point 6 or point 7. And the same, it's not joined between 11 or 12. Let me show you. I'm going to zoom in on that. The reason for it is, is that that part of the circle becomes hidden. But if I did this, deleted that line, then there's a hidden line outside of a solid. And it cannot be. A hidden line must, with be, must be within a solid. So I've just drawn that line to show where the hidden detail line starts. But for all practical purpose, we can delete that line. And the same on this side here. I can delete that line. Um, I wouldn't do it though, but I mean it's so close that I don't even think you'll see it on your drawings. Because what is important is that I'm going to work with these 12 lines that I've drawn to my top point all 12 of these and I'm now going to determine the section of those points. Let's get our intersecting points. I've encircled all my intersecting points and remember many of them has got two points. Here's only one point T9. There's two points, one on T8 and T10. There's two points, one on T7, one on T11. There's one on T6, one on T12. There's one on T, uh, T1 and T5 is intersected there. T2 and T4 is intersected there, and the last one is at T3 intersected at that point. Those points get projected all onto its corresponding lines on the left view. 
or the left sectional view. I've zoomed this drawing in so we have a clearer view of what I'm doing or going to do. I started off with line 1, found its intersecting point and followed its projection up to line 1, or should I say T1, from the top point to point 1. From top point to point, or line 1, that's the one. Followed that projection, that's intersecting point, but it's also the line 5. So I've also gone to T5, which is that line there up to T5, right? In this case, I've done two T or T2 at that point. T2 is that line, follow T up to 2, it's that point there. And the same with T4, it's on that line there. How do I know? Because if I look at this line, it's line 4 up to point T is intersected at that same point. So we go across and up to line T4. And we're going to do the same with all the other lines. T3, which is this line, is that last point. It's that top line. I've done that line. So take good care that you uh, put your points on the right lines. I mean, I cannot have put that line here. It would have been wrong. Or that intersecting point there would have been wrong. So make sure that when you do your projection, that you project onto the correct lines. These lines or little circles that I've made, that then is going to be the section on section AA. This is what you'll see if you look from the left hand side. You will look right into the bottom part of that section and this part which will be left because everything behind the section line, in other words the whole base and everything up to the section line, this whole base and everything up to the section line will be gone. So therefore I've colored in the outer lines that should be left. These other lines is faint lines and must be left as faint lines to show me how you got to those points. And this is the section then of the left view. I'm not going to do the right view because the right view will look exactly the same as the left view, except that if you look from the right hand side this time, you'll see the base, so the base will be visible. So go ahead and draw the right view as we've done the left view. I'm going to go straight ahead and do the true shape of this sectional plane down here at the bottom. Just take note that in this case they don't just want the true shape. The question that has been asked is that they want the view. The question actually reads, a view showing the true shape of the cut surface as seen in the direction of arrow Z. Arrow Z. Not just a true shape, a view showing the true shape. Okay, I've determined the base. You can see these darker lines that I've drawn, each one of the base, and I've measured from this side, skipped that side. Okay, so that there I've got number 12, and I've measured 12. I've measured 6, skipped 6, measured 6, and you know the rest of it is all done in the same manner. And that's how I got the base. I've zoomed in at this point. Um, I haven't added the T there because T is T is gone outside of this picture, but we know that point T is on top, it's on top. So I have now taken that point, that's on line 9 or T9, I've dropped that onto T9. I've taken that point, which is on T8 and 10, so and I've projected that onto T10 and T8, and I've done the same with all the other points. Guys, in this case, please, you'll have to keep an open head open eyes and um, really try your utmost best to get this right. And that is what the final drawing would look like. A sectional view showing the true shape, sectional view, view in capital letters, and a sectional left view showing a left view, not a true shape. Obviously they also want you to draw the right view. So that is the total answer then without the right view. Use uh, you must still do the right view.